it's always a good idea when you're out taking landscape photography photos to try a different path or take a different path. I'm at a location right now where I've come here a number of times before, but it's my first time here all year. And it's a place called Mullenhassig Woods and Mullenhassig Falls, which you see right below me here. And ordinarily you go to the bottom and you shoot back in towards the falls, but there's another pathway, as you saw in the intros we were walking through, and it comes up around the top of the falls itself. And now I'm at the back of the falls, looking towards, I suppose, where it cascades down. And it does give a different viewpoint. It gives you something that you don't necessarily see from the majority of photographs from a well-photographed spot, but it's always beneficial, like I say, to take a different path and see what you can explore, see what you can discover, and ultimately see what you can photograph. So we're gonna get set up here. We're gonna take a couple of photographs. I'm gonna be primarily using my polarizer as well today. So we'll come back and I'll show you why I'll use the polarizer. So I'll show you some footage from this camera here as the advantages of using the polarizer when you're out in woodlands, water, and obviously with colors as well. So come back in about 30 seconds. Okay, so as you can see on the footage from the camera that I'm taking the photograph with, you've got a quite a bright scene that's there and there's a lot of reflections as well that are coming from the flat area of the water. And the colours themselves as well, they're nice but they're not really jumping out like they can do. So with the polarizer on, all we need to do is twist the polarizer and then what that will have is an effect that it will darken and take away the bright areas you can see here on the flatness and allows you to effectively be able to see into the water and create more of a focus on where you want the eye itself to lead within the shot. If you go too far, you'll see that the opposite effect happens. So it gets bright again. Now the polarization is at a different part of the frame, but it's obviously not prevalent or visible because there's no highlights within that area. But we bring it back again to where we are. You can see it here, just about here is right. And then when we take our shot, you've got a darker area, the water coming in on the right hand side, leading into the scene and there's no distractions from the bright areas on the left hand side themselves. So quick example of why you should use a polarizer when you're out taking photographs in the woodland like I said or with water or anywhere that there's going to be reflections as well you can remove those reflections and distractions within the image. Something I always try and do when I'm out taking photographs is experiment. Try and get something that you may not think is going to be a good shot at first view, but later when you bring it back and you put it into post, it might actually result in being a nice image. And also, because it's something that you've seen, it's not necessarily going to be the same shot that other people would have photographed. As you probably saw here in the B-roll that I showed you leaning into this, there's this tree. I don't know what type of tree it is. It's an extremely unusual tree but it's completely covered in moss. So effectively, it gives a lovely green view to the, the frame. Underneath that is where the water itself is flowing through. It's starting on the right-hand side, flowing behind the tree and going down to the main waterfall below me. I'm taking a long exposure. So at the moment, I put my settings up to F16 and I'm at a 3.2. Uh, second exposure I've got my ASO at 50 I'm only still using my polarizer and I'm still able to get that long exposure that's because I'm putting it up to f16 and bring my ASO down to 50 but by having that longer exposure you get the movement of the water that comes behind this green that remains static looking at it here 
from a compositional point of view, I think it does work. You've got some nice ferns that are below me here as well. And as you can see, I've got the camera pointing down. But what I hope it will do is that you'll see this movement coming in in the back. So you'll get a different bit of layering, I suppose, within the image. And then this tree, which I said, which remains static, should be the dominant and foreboding aspect within the image, but with the water flowing from the right to the left. So giving a three-dimensional aspect. That's what I think anyway to this image. But like I said, always experiment. There's nothing wrong with taking a photo if you think it's going to work or not. Guess what? If it works, great. If it doesn't, no biggie. You're still taking the photograph. But don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to take a shot. And again, like I said from the outset in this video, don't be afraid to take a different path. Moving along further now and I'm just coming to the area that I really want to photograph but um, there's a peak I think you can just see it down here in your frame but there's a peak of rock that's coming up here and it's kind of interrupting the scene yes but what it is doing is it's giving me a nice movement of water on one side and then it, as it comes down the waterfall on the other area as well also and again with the polarizer here I'll actually show you two shots. I'll take one shot where the polarizer is not working and I'll take a second shot to show you the polarizer working. And what it does is it removes all the reflection on the lower part here. So it takes away the distraction because your eye is always going to be drawn towards the brightest part within the scene anyway. So by removing that, um, it doesn't do that, but also it also enhances the redness that you see here on these leaves that have fallen on the rock. And then you've got the main waterfall, which is on the right hand side of the frame. There are a bit of colors in the leaves as well up high, so I put it into a portrait orientation shot to allow me to be able to capture that within the image also. My settings at the moment here, I'm actually going for quite a long exposure in the bigger scheme of things. So I'm up to five seconds. My ISO is at 16, sorry, my F is at 16. And again, my ISO is at 50. I don't need to have any ND filters, even though we're during the day, it is great to be fair, there's no highlights, but it still gives you an opportunity to take a long enough exposure without having to use an ND filter. Hopefully the shot will work out, not 100% if I'm being honest with you, but it is something that's slightly different. But I do notice a nice shot that we can get from down here and that's where we're going to end up on this different path. I'm at the final part here now for where I wanted to photograph. The main waterfall is just below me here. It's quite a good flow actually, so I think it's going to give me a nice shot. I'm at F11 at the moment, I'm at 3.2 seconds, keeping my ASO as well at 50 to enable me to be able to have that slightly longer exposure. But compose the shot that the waterfall is going to be coming in from the right hand side of the frame, coming down into the main area I suppose where it lands and then flowing back out into the area below. Are a bit of colors in the leaves as well. Not a lot up high, but there are some nice leaves that are there. And you know, there's a good bit of falling leaves as well. So we're in autumn right now, of course. So it's gonna give a nice photograph to the right hand side as well. Just in the frame are some green ferns, but some old red leaves as well on the rocks. Do think it's gonna be a lovely shot. Got some nice photographs, I think, here today by taking a different path, but 
Um, I'm going to sign out from this episode now. I do hope you enjoyed coming along with me. I'm going to continue my journey today, but I'm going to go down below now and shoot this waterfall from the traditional side that you normally would. But that hopefully will allow me to be able to get some nice colours in the blanket of leaves that are on the ground. Nice bit of contrasting orange and yellow colours of the leaves that are above. And then with this fast flowing waterfall as well coming through the centre of the images themselves. So thanks very much for joining me. As always, please do hit that like button. Give me a comment. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell. Would really appreciate it. And until the next time, Schlange Fall.